Again, happy Sabbath. Sabbath. I like it when people actually are happy. Amen. You know, you come in and you're happy. You know, you see people, hey, how you doing? Happy Sabbath. And things are great. It's not like that all the time. Sometimes we come in needing a shot in the arm. But that's why we're here. Sometimes we, we need somebody to pick us up. That's why we're all here. This is a place where you can come home and get what you need from home. Amen? And sometimes you need a switch. Not today, though, by God's grace. We pray. You know, one thing the Bible teaches us is that all things originate in the Spirit. It teaches us that. Whether we, 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 we classify the physical manifestation as good or bad, it always has its origin where? In the Spirit. Always. It's all through the Bible. From the first verse in the Bible until the last verse of the Bible, it teaches us that everything originates in the Spirit. And, and what happens is this. Even in Genesis, I think it's uh, chapter 1, verse 2, it says, it says, And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the deep. So anything that happened after that originated in the Spirit. And so if we know that, we should be so very happy that God has given us a spirit that we can let things originate in us. Amen? Go to Mark chapter 9 if you would. See, the word tells us that something happens in the spirit before it happens in the natural. It has to be that way. Something happens in the spirit before it can happen in the natural because the spirit was here first. God is a spirit. He was first. So everything happened in the spirit first. We came along at some point in the movie, in that long eternal timeline. Before there was a flesh, there was spirit. Amen? Amen. And so Adam was useless until he got the spirit. Because when he said, I breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. He said the second Adam was a quickening spirit. See, all these things, all, you know, we just read and just go by and don't really pay attention to because we're trying to mark off the chapter, off our list of things to read. People often tell me, I'm, I'm dedicating myself to read the entire Bible, and so they, they check off. Well, I've read the Old Testament, now I'm ready for the New Testament. Would you just stop trying to race through eternity? Read, learn, go back. I don't know about I don't know about you guys were in school. Maybe I was as you know not as smart as you guys, but if I had a, a test on three chapters, I would have to read first of all the chapter. I'd read it first. Then I'd go back and read it and take notes. Then I'd go back and read it again to see if my notes explained what I read. It took me a while to. I was a decent student, you know, got scholarships and all that kind of stuff. But I had to do that because I wanted to know. I wanted to understand. I didn't want to just regurgitate. I didn't want to be on the test and say, I can give you what you gave me, but as soon as I walk out this room, I am never going to remember any of that again. That's a waste of my time. If I'm going to sit there and learn something, I'm going to learn it for the rest of my life. Because I guarantee you this, if anybody is in education, and they would know this, it's a building process. Man, if you, if you get those third grade fractions, man, you're going you to knock out that fourth grade division. But if you learn fractions just to take a fraction test, you will never learn how to cook. Y'all, oh, I see, most, Michael, most people don't cook, huh? But if you don't know fractions, when they tell you to put a quarter cup or something, what are you going to do? Or they say, oh, put a, a, quarter, a, a quarter of a teaspoon and an eighth of a tablespoon. What are you going to do? I don't know what that means. You're going to try to Google it. They're going to show you a picture. But you don't even have a tablespoon. <laughs> you don't have a measuring cup. So when we learn things, we learn it for eternity. Amen? And the things that we learn need to originate in the spirit. And so let's go to Mark chapter 9 if we would. 
And it started at verse 23. Mark chapter 9, and because we're going to learn something, we're going to follow his lead. Mark chapter 9, we begin at verse 23. Jesus said unto him, talking to this, this guy's father, this, this, this guy was possessed. And he was possessed bad all his life. And so his father came, he went to the disciples and, and said, disciples, help me. We recognize something's going on here that's not of the natural. So I'm going to go find me some spiritual people to try to help me with this spiritual issue. But they couldn't do it. And we know that lesson. God said, you know, fasting and praying. But, but Christ was explaining something to the father. He said in verse 23 of Mark 9, Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help thy my unbelief. He knew whatever he was wasn't strong enough. So he said, help my unbelief. I believe you can do this. And it was, it was really noted that he did believe because he asked his disciples to deal with a spiritual problem. So he believed that all things natural have its origin in the spirit. He believed that. Verse 25 said, when Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, thou dumb and deaf spirit. I charge thee, come out of him, and enter no more into him. And the spirit cried, and rent him sore, and came out of him. And he was as one dead, insomuch that many said, he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand, and lifted him up, and he arose. See, the physical manifestation was he could not hear, and he could not speak. It was deaf and dumb, wasn't it? That's the physical manifestation. But everybody who knew anything knew it was something else. That's why Jesus didn't say, here, take this. This will help your coal. He said what? He called the origin. He said, you deaf and dumb what? Spirit. So because the man was physically deaf, the man was physically dumb, he didn't say, oh man, hope that works out for you. He called on the origin of the problem and rebuked the origin, which was what? The spirit. He even called it the spirit. You see what we're talking about here? See, follow his lead. See, there's deaf and dumb spirits. See, the spirit was leading this man all his life. That deaf and dumb spirit, and he had, he had cousins with him too now, because he would, he would tear him this way, he would, he would convulse him, he would be foaming at the mouth. That spirit led him all his life. Unfortunately, that spirit was dictating his life. He couldn't do anything, why? Because that spirit was dictating his life. He had no choice but to follow the lead of that spirit. It would cast him into the fire. It would cause him to go into convulsions. It pretty much was in charge of his life. His physical life on this planet was being run by a spirit that meant him no good. See, there's a spirit that Christ called the deaf and dumb spirit. Do you know there's a spirit called jealousy? Numbers 5 teaches us that. He talks about the spirit of jealousy come upon a man. And, and, and when a spirit of jealousy comes upon a man, you might want to not be around because there's a spirit of jealousy. That spirit will cause things to happen, won't it? Y'all believe that? Now, spirit of je uh, the, the scripture we, we, we quoted was Numbers 514, if you want to write it down, Numbers 514. But it's a spirit of jealousy. And he said, when he comes upon his, uh, the jealousy of his wife and she be defiled, or if the spirit of jealousy come upon him and, and, and he be jealous of his wife and she be not defiled. See, he said, she could have cheated on him or couldn't cheat it on him, but the spirit of jealousy is on him. <laughs> you ever been through that before with somebody? That person could not have done what you think, but that spirit is on you. And it causes you to go blind. Because all you see is that. Whether it be true or not true, that's all you see and you act and you respond based upon that spirit. Jealousy. Let's go to Proverbs 6. Proverbs 6. Might as well read it. Proverbs 6. 
See, because we're, we're trying to tell you that everything in the, in the natural comes from the spirit. And if we're led by that spirit, it will cause us to be led either in the good or in the evil. Amen? So in, in, in Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 34, I love the way he put it. He said, for jealousy is the rage of a man. Therefore, he will not spare in the day of vengeance. And it is, it's funny, he goes on, he says, he will not regard any ransom, neither will he rest content, though thou givest him many gifts. When that spirit of jealousy gets you, I don't want to hear it. There's nothing you can do. I'm coming, and I'm coming hard, and I'm coming strong. And until that spirit leaves that person, that man or woman, they call it in the court a, a, a crime of passion. You know, you can get off in the courtroom if they say it's a crime of passion. I walked in and saw them. I just shot everybody. <laughs> they say, well, that's a crime of passion. All right, yeah, six months probation, peace. But it's real. But it's, it had its origin in the spirit. That's why he called it the spirit of jealousy. We see that? Now, if you've ever been jealous, you understand what that spirit will do. It'll, it'll make you sick. You won't be able to sleep at night. You'll be worried. You'll be on the phone. Every five, you'll be texted every three minutes. I saw a spirit of jealousy uh, played out in this, 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 this person on the web. She, the police went and picked this lady up because she had texted her ex-boyfriend 27,000 times in a week. That's hard to do. But it was on her. That spirit caused her to do that. And if anybody been caught in a relationship where you had to be jealous, that spirit will make you do some things that you don't want to do. That, sp that spirit will make you climb a wall. It will make you look through windows. It will make you park outside somebody's house. Look at y'all. That's never happened to me. I've been in a relationship and, you know, no one would leave me. It'll have you talk bad to somebody's mama. Because it's a spirit. And once that spirit occupies you, it's in control. Okay? Know that. See, once we allow a spirit to take up residency in our minds, we lose control of our actions. And we are at the mercy of that spirit. This can be a problem when the spirit is of an evil nature. But when the spirit is of God's origin, it's just as effective in dictating our actions. See, we got the spirit of jealousy, we got the spirit of death and dumb, but when it's the spirit of God, it has the same effect, but in the right direction. Amen? Go to Isaiah if you would. Isaiah 11. When it has a godly origin, it is an, as effective in dictating our actions. This is what we want. We want that spirit dictating our actions. We want that spirit leading us. That's what he said this morning, follow his lead. Now we're in Isaiah chapter 11. Because he, 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 he listed some spirits that come from God. He listed some spirits that we can grab on to. Because he was talking about Christ. And he said, these are the spirits that lead my Messiah. Now let's look at this in Isaiah 11 and verse 2. He said, and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Then he started counting. He said, the spirit of wisdom. That's a spirit that can, can, that can lead you. The spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge, and uh, the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Do you know to you to fear the Lord, you must be led by that spirit? Anybody try to fear the Lord without it? Okay, anybody try to obey God without the spirit of God? Because you heard God said this, well, I'm going to do it. And you have not the spirit of God. 
He said, without my spirit, you can't even hear my voice. Ask the rest of the nations. He talked about the nation of Israel. When I say that, I mean the real nation of Israel. I'm not talking about the one over there that established in 1948. I'm talking about the real one. The real one that God put together. He said, that's part of being in my nation. You know what? You can hear my voice. Can you imagine not being able to hear God? I mean, not even, if you can't audibly hear them, you can open his book and hear him, can't you? But he said, I'm going to give you these spirits. And he talked about Christ a little bit more, verse 3. And shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. And he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears, but with righteousness shall he judge the poor, and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked, and righteousness shall be his girdle of his loins, and faithfulness the girdle of his reins. See, that spirit will lead him. That spirit can lead us. And this was a righteous spirit. It had a righteous origin, and it had righteous manifestations in the natural, because Christ was right, righteous while he walked in, the, in this natural body. He had the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of righteousness, the spirit of fear of the Lord. See, those spirits have a godly origin. They can have the same effect on us if we let it reside in us. Jesus told us that we would be given a guide to lead us through this life. He told us, I'm going to give you a guide to lead you through every circumstance. But you've got to let that guide reside in you. See, just like the devil has been setting up shop in our, in our, in our minds. We, we're very, very familiar with, with him. You know, he's got a room in our house. <laughs> no, no, not my. Mm -hmm. He got a room inside your head. You want me to call it, what we call the names of the spirits? Or y'all going to say your man? Because we can tell you what's res residing in your head, if you like, if you cannot identify that there's an issue. But we want to focus more on letting another spirit reside. Amen? Because there can be an eviction today. You can evict that evil spirit out of your life. So you maybe have room for the Holy Ghost. I, hold the, I hear the Holy Spirit is a magnificent decorator. He can go in and move stuff around. Now, sometimes he's going to have to give stuff to the goodwill. So let it go. But I've had that since I was five. He said, that's the demon that's been bothering you since you are five, so we're going to have to give him away. This is what the Holy Ghost will do. John 16. John chapter 16. Jesus told us he was going to give us this. He told us he was going to give us this. But it doesn't matter if he gives it. We got to receive it. I can give you a, a, a debit card that's connected to $15 million. But unless you go to the ATM, it's just sitting there. If I gave you a debit card that had $50 on it, you'd break your neck getting over there. I would. <laughs> But until, it doesn't matter that it's there. Will you go? Will you be led by him? Will you go ahead and try him? He gave you the pen number. Try him. John 16, 13. How be it when he, then he, there's a name for this spirit. The spirit of truth is come. He will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. See, even the spirit of truth is guided by a spirit. Think about that. The spirit of truth that's given to us is guided by a spirit. Because God, the Father, is a spirit. And the spirit of truth just goes about doing what that spirit tells him to do. That spirit that possesses you 
it determines your reaction. The spirit that possesses you determines your direction. That's why David was so concerned about the Holy Spirit being with him. Because he knew whatever spirit was, was, was in him was going to dictate his actions. When the spirit of lust got him, it dictated his actions. And what did he do? He murdered, he lied, he cost lives. Because what? That spirit took over. And once David gave in to that spirit, the spirit was leading the way. Didn't make David a condemned soul, did it? At that moment, the spirit led the way. Once he decided there was nothing David could have done to keep that from happening. I want you to know how strong those spirits are. We always tell you, once you get on the 52 Jackson, uh, for y'all who don't ride the bus, that's a bus. You know, uh, public transportation, y'all familiar with that, aren't you? Okay. Once you get on that bus, it's going exactly where that bus is going. And unless you get off that bus, you're going exactly where that bus is going. So when that spirit gets on you and it gets in you, you're going where that spirit is going to go. But thank God you can get off. You can pull, I don't even know, they, they still got the thing you pull that let you know to get off the bus. Eh. Man, y'all really don't know nothing about this. All right, amen. But what we have to understand is we got to stop letting the evil reside and start letting the holy live. Amen? Yeah. And let that spirit lead us. Don't get in the way of it. Amen? Amen. Psalm 51. David was worried. David knew himself. David knew that at any moment he could go crazy. Sound familiar? Yeah. At any moment you could... Uh, yeah. At any moment, if you're weak, you can be overtaken. David said in Psalm 51 and verse 10, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence. Mm. And take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with what? Oh, there's another spirit from heaven called a free spirit perfect law of liberty. He said, uphold me with that. Because if I don't have that residing in me, I'm going to commit adultery. That's what he did, right? I'm going to number Israel. If I don't have this connection, I'm going to go astray. That's why we can't play with this thing any longer. We must let the old man die so the new man may live. We must be led by our Savior. So being led by the Holy Ghost hmm, gives us understanding and clarity. We know that? See, it, it, the, it, the, David's connection gave him the wisdom to rule. When he was connected, he could be wise, couldn't he? It gave him the ability to see the truth in all situations. And, and, and he, when he had that spirit, he could be guided to always act in a godly manner. Think about that. Wouldn't you love to always respond to any circumstance in a godly manner? You would have a lot less regret in your life. Every circumstance, when the Holy Spirit is residing in you, you respond godly. Hey, marriages, wouldn't that help? Because I, I, I'll tell you, we don't always respond godly. Okay, I don't always respond godly. I don't want to hurt nobody's feelings, Micah, because you know, they look at me like, you ain't in my house. Yeah, I am. <laughs> the Holy Ghost is. You know, when you let him in, he'll stop by and check on you. <laughs> and say, ah, <laughs> come on, y'all. Tighten up this boat. Come on, let's do this. I don't know how many counseling sessions I've had with people, whether it be marriage, health, relationships. All, it's all because 
a godly manner was not practiced. I went off or I did something I shouldn't have done. And when I hear people say that, I have hope then. I have no hope for people who will not take responsibility for their actions. When you walk into a counseling session with Pastor Shaw, when you start talking about he or she did this, you about to catch it. And now, some of y'all been in those meetings. Anybody more? Sometimes you've been in those meetings. Oh, don't tell me about him. Don't tell me about her. What you doing? <laughs> well, I'm just the innocent lamb. Get out of here. Until you're ready to face the spirit that was in you, this cannot be fixed. I deal with myself that way. Sorry I'm so hard on myself because I get to be hard on you after that. But I have to look and see, did I respond in a godly manner? And when I don't respond, all hell breaks loose. Because why? I let the spirit reside. And what's dangerous about this is you might catch it and say, oh, oh, man, I'm sorry, Lord. But you've already spit that spirit out into your home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now it's looking for somebody to land in. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And since you, you, you fertilize the place, yeah. it'll be able to grow. Yeah. Yeah. But oh, when we're led by the Holy Ghost, understanding and clarity come. These two things we desperately need, understanding and clarity, and only the Holy Spirit can give it to you. Yeah. Yeah. Romans 8. And you know what? When the Holy Spirit is leading you, it puts you in a very advantageous position. Let's go to Romans 8 and find out what position that is. Extremely advantageous put you at a great advantage. Romans 8, 14. Romans chapter 8 and verse 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Okay. Hallelujah. <laughs> Y'all don't, don't even see the, the excitement about that. To be the son and daughter of the Most High? When we are led, that's what we are? How powerful is that? Do you know who else was the son of God? Jesus. Did Jesus have power? Where's your power? For ye have not received the spirit of bondage, again, to fear. But ye have received the spirit of adoption. Mm -hmm. Whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Mm. Think about this. You are the son and daughter of God. I know your parents were good folks, but they're not this. I love my father and my mother, but they're not this. I don't mind being adopted. <laughs> I don't mind what he, what he called it here, uh, uh, the, the spirit of adoption. I don't mind that. I remember when, when my youngest, Joshua, was born. His name was Joshua Phillip. God gave me that name to give him. I said, oh, Lord, <laughs> that's a rough name to have. But my, my great aunt called me. No, she talked to my father. She said, Joshua, Philip, there's nobody in our family named Joshua or Philip. Because when it's family, you, you continue to lie. And I told my father I had been adopted into a new family. And so that's why he's named that. And I don't mind being part of the new family because some of my old family are in the new family. It helps, doesn't it? When somebody in your blood relation is actually in the same family you're in. 
See, the Spirit of God, what it will do, it will always lead you back to the Father. Isn't that wonderful? He said, it will always lead us home. It will lead us back to what we were created to be. Because that's what the Spirit of God's job is, is to lead us into all righteousness so we may go back to the Garden of Eden and walk in the cool of the day with our God. When you know you are part of this royal family, you know what happens? You begin to think differently. You start acting differently. Not sadiddy, not snooty, not bougie, or whatever other word you want to use for thinking you got your nose up in the air. You think like a royal member. And you know what else? You see things differently. When you are led by the Holy Spirit, love becomes that spirit that dictates your actions. See, that's the difference between royalty and people who don't understand. See, people, poor people look at rich people and think they look like this or they act like this. Do you know poor people don't know how rich people act because they've never been rich? First thing a poor person does when they get money, they're going to go down to Rodeo Drive and go spend $800 on a purse. First thing a rich person does is go buy the store and sell you an $800 purse. That's how rich people think. You see how different that is? Same store, different perspective. When you become led by the Spirit of God, things don't bother you anymore. It doesn't matter what they are saying. All you do is say, big brother Jesus, they're talking about me. He said, no, didn't I tell you, blessed are them when men shall revile you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you for my sake. Didn't I tell you that was going to happen? He said, consider yourself blessed. He said, okay, thanks. Go back out there. I don't know. Yeah. Amen. What else you got to say? You don't get that prideful spirit where you think you're going to defend yourself. Do you know if you had to defend yourself against everything everybody said, you wouldn't do anything but be defending yourself. And as Satan knows that, he makes you a useless individual. I can't spend my time worried about what you said. Only if I'm being led by the Holy Spirit. If I'm being led by the Holy Spirit, then what? Whatever I'm saying is whose words? So what did he tell Samuel? Don't worry. They didn't reject you. They rejected me. You just keep on doing what I tell you to do. Can you do that? Only when you're led by the Holy Spirit. And don't get caught in your own self-righteousness. Because you'll start letting words slip out of your mouth that's not him. And then you try to put his stamp on your word. Well, I'm going to do this. Lord, help me. Oh, what? Lord, I'm going to do this. Help me. Isn't that backwards? Lord, help me. What do you want me to do? God's not blessing messes. Y'all do realize, don't you? Oh, I got this, I got this grandiose <clears throat> thing. I'm, if you belong to the family, because you're being led by the family spirit, the first thing you do is say, Lord, is this you? Is this of you? I don't care how much time I spend on this. If it's not you, I'm out. And every Sabbath morning, we get up and pray and say, Lord, what do you want your people to hear? I say, Lord, you put this down like you want it and then teach me how to teach it. Because I pop up and I, I get up with an idea in my head that God did not put in my head. It sounds righteous. It's, it's from the Bible. Amen. I don't more trust my feelings, my thoughts, and a man or more. Your soul is on the line. You think I'm going to trust me? I hope y'all see what I'm saying. Amen. See, I know you can hear what I'm saying, but can you see what I'm saying? Amen. Now look at this. Love becomes the spirit that dictates your actions. 
See, when true love is your guide, your actions have power because they have a godly origin. That's why you start acting different. You act in love. I mean, pure love. That's how you respond to everything, with love. Now, not that, that, that made-for-TV movie love, not that Disney Channel love, not the love that you heard on those, those lustful songs. Lord, ooh, I love you. I wish every time that somebody would misuse that word, God would throw something at them. <laughs> Don't use me like that. God is love. I'm not in anything you're talking about. Even when you think you love somebody, you love, most people love people who can do something for them. And I'm going to tell you, when you know you're not in love, because as soon as they stop doing it, you can't stand them. Amen. All those butterflies go away. Uh-huh. Y'all know them butterflies. I know Isaiah, you know the butterflies. You walk in the room, see your smiling little wife. And, hey, babe. Butterflies. After all them years. Anybody got all them years and still have those butterflies from time to time? Keep them going. Be married 80 years, and when you see your husband and see your wife, you ought to have a little flutter going on. And you know what? In that period of time, they have made you mad. Some of y'all been married a year, and y'all been fighting every day. Amen? We had had an anniversary. Was it last week? Was it? Who had a fifth? No. Y'all had an anniversary. How long ago? I mean, how many years? Seven years. Hmm? It's a good number. <laughs> You're going to complete the madness and start doing real well. <laughs> seven years. Now, in seven years, you had some ups and downs. But love can ride that up and down. Because love's not built on emotion. Because you know what love is? It's a spirit. And so when you have that spirit in you, all those ups and downs, you know, you're floating on the waters, and sometimes you're feeling good, and sometimes you're feeling bad, but feeling has nothing to do with love. Because the spirit of God is leading you. Amen? Go to 2 Timothy, if you would. When love dictates your actions, you'll know you're being led by the Holy Ghost. Amen. And everything you do will have power. Do you realize that? Everything you do in the natural will have power because its origin is from the throne. You can speak a word and change a room. And you didn't, even, you didn't go in there to do that. <laughs> you didn't go in there and say, I'm going to change the mood. No, you, didn't. you just went out there and what came out of you changed everything. 2 Timothy 1. God says, I got a spirit for you. We know this verse, Second Timothy 1, 7 says, For God had not given us the spirit of fear. Now, he called it the spirit of fear. He said, I didn't give that to you. And so where is the origin of that spirit? You of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father, you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning. He's a liar. That's the origin of fear. He even got people believing that the fear of God and fear, uh, that fear is the same thing. But he said, I gave you something else. See, if he didn't give you this, he's going to tell you what he gave you. He said, I gave you a spirit of power, a spirit of love, and a spirit of a sound mind. Even in a pandemic, you got a sound mind. Thank you. Thank you. You're not letting fear dictate your actions. You're letting love dictate your actions. Yeah. We, got a, we got an ordinance in this town that talks about wearing a mask. Do you know I go to the store and wear one for them? Because yeah. I want them to stand down and be comfortable. Yeah. I know they don't know what I know. Yeah. And you know what? Because they're standing down, they might get an opportunity to hear. I don't care what you say about me. I'm not going, I mean, it is not an ordinance that makes me love you. 
It's not an ordinance that makes me care about how you are going through this. I'm trying to help you through this. And so when you see me out there at the Lowe's, because I'm at the Lowe's and the depots and the rest of the people who are selling wood and plants and fence posts, I'm there. When I'm at the Sprouts and the Whole Foods, I, I, hey, these people don't know what I know. But if I can make you stand down, give you a sound mind, I'll do it. I'm not doing it because I believe that, that this is the, the all in all or this is the fix. I'm doing it because I care. And I want you to be comfortable. Do you understand that point? You, know, you can believe that this doesn't work, but you can still believe that you can care for somebody. Please understand that. And, what, and one thing I understand also is that if you're not doing anything, you need to be wearing eight masks. <laughs> See, there's a certain calmness when you got the Holy Ghost. You're not, you, you're not, you're not all, what, I don't have to turn on and get a fix from the television. I don't have to say, uh, what, what's happening today? It's a calmness with the Holy Ghost. They could say, everybody in America is suffering from COVID-19 and I still be the same way I am right now. I'd be saying, Lord, what do you want us to do? How can we love them? How can we love them through this? How can we give them what you gave us? How can we, how can, you know, that, that's my thing. I'm not worried about it. I don't want anybody getting sick. You know, this thing is real, right? Now, this origins, we can talk about that another time. But I don't want anybody ill. I don't want to prove a point. I want to do what God tells us to do. Have a sound mind, and when you're being led by the Spirit, it will tell you what to do, when to do it, and why sometimes you're doing it. It's given me an opportunity to teach a lot of people about their health. Yeah. Only because I had this thing on my face. Yeah. Really? Is that true? I said, well, this, 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 this. Wow, I didn't know that. But they would have never come at me. They would have, they would have shunned me and called me a, a crazy man. <laughs> but I said, Lord, what would you want me to do? And guess what happens? The door is open. I want you to know something about this spirit. Your stress level will go down. Do you know what's killing people faster than COVID? Do you know that stress will allow you to receive this disease quicker? Oh, but you, you're doing this. You're watching, you're watching the report. Dead folks, dead folks, dead folks. And then you get tired of the dead folks channel and you turn to police beating people down, police beating people down. What do you think your stress levels are doing? And what happens to your immune system? I don't know why I'm sick. But you're shaking because you can't move because you're living under fear. You have allowed fear to enter into your soul and so fear is dictating your actions. Ephesians 4. See, we need to go ahead and settle into God and let him lead us. Please understand this. If we let him lead us, do you know all will be well with our soul? And if you have a leader such as God, be a follower. It's, don't let God walk. He said, come on, and he keeps walking. And you have to turn around and find you. Because you got distracted. Or somebody came and said, you know you're not going the right way. Don't let anybody who is not walking with your father tell you what direction you should be going. I do not care what relative or friend that might be. If they don't believe in the God 
that created. Don't take their counsel as godly. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, or sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Please remember that. But, but, but somebody said, if somebody doesn't believe in Jesus the Christ, don't take their word over Christ's word. Amen? And if they got something to say, run it through the Messiah message board and see if it sticks. Because you're going to get a lot of chat, 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 chat. Just say, okay, Father. He can say discard or take. Moses had a father-in-law. Gave him godly counsel. Didn't he? See, if, 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 the, if, if, if Jethro and Moses were alive, Jethro couldn't get in the church. Because he didn't walk exactly like we did. But God said, speak to your boy. <laughs> and was it a godly counsel? It was, wasn't it? So run everything by the one, the spirit that leads you. The spirit led him in that direction. Ephesians 4, verse 14 reads, That we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. See, when you are settled in God, yeah. you're not looking for news. You're not looking for it. I'm not looking to be convinced of something else. I'm not looking to leave God. I'm not, I'm not worried that somebody is, is, is lying to me. God will point out that's a lie. Cunning craftiness, as he calls it. Because they're laying in wait to deceive you. But when you are settled in God, when you're led by the Holy Spirit, all those things will be evident to you. So we are attentive to the voice of God when we have the confidence in God to wait on his instruction. And the confidence comes from this. He told me this this morning. He said, knowing that he is with us now as, as we wait, as well as in the future when his instructions are given. Think about that. When we know that while we are waiting on God, he is with us. And while he, his manifestations come, he is with us. Then we can just wait on God and settle in God. Amen? Amen. We'll be blessed if we believe that. We'll be safe if we'll believe that. And we will be children of God when we believe that. That's why when he says, wait on me, he didn't say wait because I'm somewhere else. God is right there. He said, wait on me right here. I'm standing there with you. We act like God can't be in one, but one place at one time. He said, I already took care of the future. I'm really worried about you. So when I say wait, then that means I'm waiting with you. Do we believe that? Yes, See, we'll, oh, we'll wait. I'm going to wait on God. Uh, be glad when he gets back. God didn't leave. He said, wait. I'm with you. I'm right there with you. And I'm also way up here. And guess what? Every step of the way, I'm with you. So our confidence really should be in that. And he said, if you would just be led by my spirit, you would have no fear. The world that we live in is a petri dish full of evil, full of diseases, full of bacteria, full of viruses. It's full of 5G, microwave, whatever else you got. It's full of that, isn't it? These things are very real, y'all. So it's imperative for us to follow the one that promises us perfection. He promises us protection. He promises us that he will never leave us nor forsake us. See, you're not going to change what's in the air, but you can change the one you're walking with. Amen? But I want you to understand something. God is not a magician. He doesn't have to do hocus pocus with you. God is not always going to work out these instantaneous miracles. Yes, he can, but he says, hold on. I'd rather you go through something. I'd rather you see the salvation of God. 
I will give you instructions, and every point in that instruction is a lesson to teach you about me. These things are very real, so I want you all to know this. Perfection requires submission. Submission to the instructions of God. Go to Exodus 15. We'll close out. Exodus 15. We're living in this crazy world. We're living in the, in the, in the, in the poison soup. But because you don't have the spirit of fear and you're being led by the spirit of truth, don't you think he can kind of guide you through it? God didn't eliminate the Red Sea. He just guided them through it. The water didn't, didn't disappear, did it? Matter of fact, when you read it, it said it heaped up on one side. It didn't, it didn't say it went away. It heaped up on the other side. It didn't go anywhere. He just led you through it. The Jordan didn't disappear. He just led them through it. So guess what? All of this madness is not going away. But he'll lead you through it. And the purpose is to glorify his name. And somewhere along your journey, someone else might see you walking. Now, what, this is an important principle in Exodus 15. Let's go to verse 23. Exodus 15, verse 23. And when they came to Marah, they could not drink of the waters of Marah, for they were what? Bitter. God did not bring them, import them. The trucks didn't show up. The, the Sante truck didn't come. The waters were bitter. He didn't tell them to go somewhere else, did he? But what did he do? And the people murmured, of course, against Moses. You know, the ones that they missed when he died. Saying, what shall we drink? Here we go again, Moses. Not believing again, Moses. Not being led by the Spirit again, Moses. They didn't say that, but that's what, they, that's what Moses heard. And he cried unto the Lord. Why? Because he was being led by the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit said, ask the Lord. Now watch what God did. He said, uh, he cried unto the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree, which when he had cast into the waters, the waters were made sweet. There he made for them a statue and an ordinance, and there he proved them. What did God do? He led them through the crisis. But you know what? If Moses hadn't asked, if Moses wasn't led, that tree was still there, but the tree wouldn't have never made it to the water. As long as that tree was on the opposite side of that water, that water was going to stay bitter, and that tree was going to stay a tree, yeah. and you were going to be thirsty. Yeah. I'm telling y'all, miracles come with instructions. Yes. Yes. People walking around, God's going to protect me. Why you got a gun? I don't need to wear a mask. I don't need to do nothing. God's going to protect me. I'm a child of God. If you're a child of God, you'd be led by the Holy Ghost. I know y'all didn't want to hear that. Because the Holy Spirit said, Moses put this tree in his water. Now, that's instruction. Now, what happens if he did not apply the instruction? It had just been some information. But look what happened. The waters became sweet. And then he explained this whole concept in verse 26. And this is something we got to get and stop trying to claim this mystical power of God and understand that God is giving us an instruction. And he's saying, be led by my spirit because my spirit will have you actually do something. And the first thing you do is believe in it. When everything else around you tells you not to, you believe in it. And we know how you believe in it? You do it. Verse 26, and said, if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice. You see that? To the voice of the Lord thy God. And will what? Do that which is right in his sight. And will give ear 
to his commandments and keep all his statutes. Okay, stop there. If you're led by the Holy Spirit. Don't be like most people and claim the blessing of God without the submission to God. Yes. Out here saying, God going to protect me. God says, I told you to go here. But I'm over here. God is going to bless me. No, he's not. That makes him a liar. And God cannot lie. He said, he finished up, he said this. He said, I will put none of these diseases upon thee. How did he not put the diseases upon you? He led you through the diseased area because you ex did exactly what he told you to do. God told you to, <laughs> this morning to snort <laughs> seawater and xylitol water up your nose. You don't believe God told you that? But that was Sister Marie. Reed. No, it wasn't. Let me tell you how this came to be. Sister Marie asked me if she could bring something on Health Spot. This is about three, three, four weeks ago. And she told me what it was. And you know Sister Marie, because she knows me. She's known me for at least 10, longer than that, years. I'm dead serious about anything being brought to God's people. She said, I can show you. I, no, you don't have to show me. Because the Spirit told me, let it do it. Let it happen. That's how that happened. Because God said that's a good idea. How did, you know, I, sister, you might be familiar with this. The last conference we had in Memphis, what was presented was not Sister Sherry, Sister Marie, it was God. Because God said, do that. That's why you're led by the Holy Ghost. You don't worry about the details and the methodologies. You say, Lord, what do you want me to do? Do that. And when you do those things, he said, I will keep the, what? these diseases from getting to you, which I have brought upon the Egyptians. The Egyptians got them because of abject disobedience. And you know what? You can be an Egyptian very quickly. We can be visiting you in the hospital very quickly because you decided that you didn't want to hear what God said because that's an uncomfortable. I don't want to do that. As if that's got something to do with the truth. Don't trust your wants. God looks after your needs. He said, you live in a diseased area. Follow me. Follow me. Be led by me. You know all those health spotlights we had over the years. He said, Jerry, you remember, you know. We start talking about, I remember distinctly two years ago, Sister Jerry began to talk about Whole Foods. Not the store, for those watching. Whole Foods. People say, ah. God said, told her, we need to talk about Whole Foods. Re nutrient dense stuff. Stuff where we can get what we need. You know, not all the fake, not all the process, not all that stuff. And, and, and guess what? Those who listened began to change. Did they not? Those who listened, even if you just used a little bit, if you went from Morton salt to Himalayan salt, <laughs> things began to change. When you got a cold, you didn't go reach for the night quill. You reached for something else. I'm getting a scratchy throat. I think I'll chew this garlic. <laughs> when, when, when I start feeling a little stuff, I put a drop of hydrogen peroxide in my ear, and it clears all that up. Now you can start snorting stuff. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to kill the virus, put something in you that kills the virus. Anything dies that cannot eat. Amen? Amen? That's, pretty, that's a principle. So instead of you trying to figure out what, what just say, what kills that? <laughs> what starves this thing out? Many cancer patients we deal with. You want to starve cancer, stop eating sugar. Man, 
began to be like, where's my food? I've been eating this stuff. That's how I could grow so large. Starve him out. Principles. Basic principles. Amen? That's how he will not put these diseases upon you. Now, sometimes if God has to put a shield around you, his Holy Ghost around you so much, nothing gets you. He can do that too. But that ain't it. This is not it. He has given you too much to do. Just do it. If you did it wrong, if you did it the best you could, God said, I got you. I'll cover that. But put an effort for it, man. Let me leave this with you. We got to follow our leader. With all this being true, why are we afraid to follow God? Why are we hesitant when we receive the instruction of the Most High? You know why? Selfishness and pride will prove to be the death of us, y'all. We were talking about gluttony being a spirit of selfishness. If we're going to walk with God and be led by God, we've got to lose the pride and selfishness. Remember, every action we make is a manifestation of some spiritual instruction. We got it from somewhere. Amen? So if we are not following the Spirit of God, who are we following? If you follow the Spirit of the devil, what's the end of that going to be? You can, you can go to Proverbs 7 and read that. The end of it is death. You remember Proverbs 7, don't you, brothers? I know the brothers do. Yeah. See his old simple-minded man walking down the street, not being led by the Holy Ghost. She stands on the corner and waves at him. Married lady. Experienced. She says, come. I've been waiting for you. I've been thinking about you all day. Now, when the Holy Ghost is leading you, you don't hear melody in your ear. You hear a witch. Therefore, you respond differently, don't you? When she comes, slides up to you. You don't see this thing you've been desiring. You hear the voice of the devil. Now, let me ask you this. If you see something, If something's coming at you and you look at it as if it's something desirable, you drop all your shields and you go after it, don't you? But if you, the same thing, when you see clearly and you see this is the devil, you respond differently. If the devil was coming at you, what would you do? You shield up, run up, get out. You wouldn't embrace, I'll tell you that. You wouldn't go home with her, would you? You start resisting. That's why we're saying if you're led by the Spirit, you'll see things differently. You'll see them as they truly are. You don't worry. People hit on you. And because you're being led by another spirit, if you're the spirit of loneliness, the spirit of inadequacy, All the devil has to do is send somebody to tell you you're the greatest thing they've ever seen. But when you're led by the Holy Ghost and that same spirit comes in, you say, get thee hence, Satan. (laughs) Man, you got to do better than that. You want to get these hands? Let's go. You see the difference? Only because you're being led so you can see it. So, in closing, follow his lead. We got that? God is going to protect his people as they follow his lead. When he gives you something to do, my strong counsel is to do it. Don't start saying, that's not God. God would have told me personally. Really? You think you're Moses. Oh, you must be Elijah. 99% of the people God reveals things to are through somebody else. I've given you evangelists, pastors, teachers, 
apostles. I've given you helps. I've given you all these things for the edifying of the body. Why do you think I gave them to you? Because I, I'm not talking to you right now in the manner that you can handle me. Moses went to the mountain because the people couldn't handle it. Couldn't handle the presence of God. You really want God to say something to you? One on one? Witness. You sure you want to do that? His very presence is frightening. And he, he was hiding behind a, a rock. He put me in a rock and had a shield over him. I want you to see him like that. But, be, but you can't see him like that until you go through what he asked you to go through. If you can't take it from the prophets, you can't take it from him. If you know God, you'll hear him in the prophet, won't you? You'll hear him in the apostle. You'll hear him in your three-year-old. If you know him, if you're waiting for the, for the mountain experience, you'll never get to the mountain because you never wanted to walk through the valley. So when God speaks, listen, Ask the Holy Spirit to say, oh, yeah, that's you, Lord. That's you. Yeah, you're right. Don't get jealous because somebody to God told somebody else something. You know, somebody else might have been in the position and the condition to hear it. They might have been through so much hell that they're ready to listen. They've been through so much pain that they're all the defenses is down so he could get through and tell them. Yeah. Your defenses are still up because you ain't been through it enough. Yeah. Let me be quiet. I'm sorry. It's real late. <laughs> but you see what we're saying? Yeah. Oh, that's enough. All right. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Let's have a word of prayer. <laughs>